Okay, so I'm going to do all of my usual monthly stats for November 2024, including the solar generation and all of that other stuff. But this month I'm going to start with the heating because that's the most interesting thing that's been going on recently. But before I get into that, let's have a quick reminder of our system. We have a 6.8 kilowatt peak array split east and west, so 3.4 kilowatt peak on each side, going into a Give Energy battery system with a combined capacity of 14.7 kilowatt hours, so a 9.5 and a 5.2 kilowatt hour battery combined. And those are both going into a Gen 2 5 kilowatt hybrid inverter. We also have a Toshiba air-to-air -to -air heat pump system that runs our heating in the winter and cooling in the summer. And finally, we have a Mixergy IHP integrated heat pump cylinder that runs our hot water. And Cat also has an EV, which is a currently a Fiat 500e. Right, so let's start with the monthly heating load. And you can see that in November 2024, we used 416 kilowatt hours. Uh, now that's a bit above what we used in November last year at 363 and a bit kilowatt hours. That is utterly not a surprise to me because um, we've actually uh, implemented our new strategy this year where we're actually heating the house overnight during the cheap octopus go period between half midnight and half five. So we weren't doing that November last year, but we're doing that this year to basically preheat the house and to try and help ensure that we use as little peak uh, load as possible and uh, in that vein I've actually got a new chart to show you um, this one here shows all of our um, import from the grid uh, both off peak and peak since the start of October so basically since the beginning of the heating season and you can see that the the blue lines there are is all of the off peak and the yellow little tiny yellow, little yellow bars there that is actually our peak import. And you can see that basically in October, we almost used no peak import at all. There was a tiny bit here, that was us charging the car actually before we went on holiday. Um, so we needed the car just topped up a little bit extra uh, in the uh, in the afternoon one, one day. Um, that's where that tiny little bar comes from there. But otherwise, essentially no peak import in October. In November, we were doing really, really well, all the way up to about halfway through the, the, um, the 19th. I think was the first day that we actually needed any peak import at all. Let me uh, let me just click on that and see. Uh, yeah, so about 7.8, uh, 7.9 kilowatt hours. And uh, that was um, the first cold snap. So actually I want to show you a quick overlay of our heating load in isolation. So this is a screenshot from uh, the Give Energy app where I've got the um, the smart plugs registering the uh, the power consumption for our, um, our two outdoor heat pump units that are running our air-to-air -air system. Um, and you can see that uh, there were a couple of cold snaps in November, um, one that coincides with um, uh, with the first uh, block of uh, peak import that we that we needed, uh, and then um, towards the end of the month, a couple more days um, that uh, when it got a little bit chillier again. Um, but you can see that we're not really uh, using any more than about four or five kilowatt hours a day of peak import for even when it gets cold. So essentially what we're doing is heating the house overnight, um, and that means we need less uh, energy from the battery during the day but otherwise most of the heating is provided by the battery which is great um, and in fact if I show you um, uh, this chart which is this is an old chart that I used to show before um, probably a year or so ago now um, I brought it back for this uh, um, for this month because you can see that almost our entire uh, import is squeezed into that off-peak period so uh, that that's all that all these blue bars here and the yellow bars are basically anything that falls outside so where the where the orange tariff um, line goes up to the the peak period here all of this stuff all of the red bars here that's our peak import so in fact this little block here of peak import that was when we had a um uh, an octopus uh, cheap session so free power for a couple of hours and we weren't able to make best use of that I'll show you later we only made about 90p or something like that for the uh, um, for the savings there but uh, that was what that where that came from the rest of this is when the battery runs out uh, after um, supporting the, the heating during the day and we just needed a little bit of extra peak import um, during the evening but you'll also notice this is a new thing, um, a little bit of actual exports during November. Amazing, really. So this is me force exporting the battery for a little bit of time, um, just near the end of the evening if I've got some to spare, basically. So if it was particularly mild and the battery was lasting good and long into the evening, I'd just export a little bit. And then that gives us uh, this um, 15 pence per kilowatt hour export rate that we can now get using Octopus Go, which is fantastic. I wouldn't have bothered doing it um, last time because um, the export rate for, for Go was 8 pence. So it would have been way down here. But now that it's 15 pence, um, it's actually worth doing that. So uh, um, yeah, just help the grid a little bit and um, make a little bit of uh, money back from export. 
I'm actually going back to this chart, the uh, 416 kilowatt hours that we used for heating. Um, that uh, only cost us 38 pounds and 90 pence uh, to run the heating for the month, which um, is pretty extraordinary, really. Um, in fact, way less than it cost us last year because last year we would have needed more peak power. And I've calculated, in fact, that our average unit rate for import was only 9.34 pence per kilowatt hour. So uh, obviously the vast majority was at 8.5 pence per kilowatt hour um, because all, all, almost all of our consumption was at the off-peak rate um, during the uh, the cheap octopus go period. And that small amount of peak power just bumped up the average unit price to 9.34 kilowatt hour, uh, pence per kilowatt hour. If uh, I convert this amount of um, uh, electrical heating into a gas equivalent, uh, I reckon we would have used maybe about 1,200 uh, kilowatt hours of gas for heating. So I'm being quite generous there. I'm using a, a scop of about three. Um, in reality, it's probably a bit higher than that. It's not something I can actually measure using our air-to-air -air system annoyingly, but uh, um, there you go. I'm being reasonably generous to, to gas there and saying that we would have used about 1,200 kilowatt hours. I suspect actually we would have used more, but let's assume 1,200 kilowatt hours at the 6.2 pence per kilowatt hour or, uh, uh, for gas currently um, that would give us a cost of £74.63 so £74.63 gas £38.88 using our heat pump system supported by the battery so that just goes to show we've uh, halved the cost of our heating by using this system as opposed to gas so that is a big win I think and um, if you if you're able to uh, switch to electric heating with a heat pump and you have a battery system then you will absolutely find savings in your uh, in running your heating so uh, yeah uh, well worth bearing in mind if that's something you're considering doing Right, so what about the dismal solar generation? Well, way down on where it should be, 106.28 kilowatt hours of generation in November. Uh, quite a bit less than um, the same time last year at 133.5. It's about two standard deviations lower than the expected um, based on this uh, PVGIS estimate in the blue shaded area there. Uh, so yeah, pretty unusually low. Um, uh, not really much more I can say about that. And here's the rest of our monthly consumption numbers. You can see that the heating is the dominant portion of the total consumption, 416 kilowatt hours out of the total of 841.78 kilowatt hours. So basically half of the total consumption was the heating, as you'd expect. The hot water way down on last year. So this year we've used about 53 kilowatt hours. Last year, 158. And that's because last year we were using uh, a, an immersion heater in the cylinder. And this year we have the Mixed G IHP. So that's an integrated heat pump in the cylinder itself and that uh, obviously heats the hot water much more efficiently and uh, we've used only about a third the amount of energy which is uh, fantastic. The EV, um, not dissimilar to last year, 63.3, last year was 71. Um, the towel rails uh, about 16, quite similar to last year. The dehumidifiers 41 kilowatt hours, pretty similar again to last year and the remainder not dissimilar. 252 kilowatt hours compared to 265 kilowatt hours but you see the total is quite a bit down so um, 842 kilowatt hours compared to 914 kilowatt hours last year and uh, despite the fact that we used more heating so heating's a bit more but the big win is the the hot water the moving to the mixed GIHP has reduced our total consumption which is fantastic now I will say that um, we used a bit more heating the house has never felt more comfortable. It's on average, I would say, probably about a degree warmer than um, than last year in November. Uh, it just feels much more comfortable. And um, yeah, despite the fact that we used a little bit more, it's not as much more as I was expecting. Those, those two cold snaps in uh, November, not as bad as I was expecting. So it could be that, uh, you know, if we had um, more, more cold weather in November, that that would shoot up. But uh, uh, I guess that's all part of the um, uh, the variation from year to year. We'll we'll have to see. What I'm going to do at the end of the, of the winter is do a proper remodeling of what I expect the heating to be from one year to the next. Uh, that'll be a whole extra video, lots of stats and uh, data analysis. So uh, yeah, look out for that if that's the sort of thing that you enjoy. Um, but yeah, that's our consumption values. Let's move on to the money. And as always, we'll finish with the chart showing our estimated total savings for the last 12 months. You can see uh, we're running on about £2,000 um, rolling savings uh, over the last 12 months. I'm actually showing 13 months in the chart, just so you can see November last year in uh, as well as November this year. And you can see that uh, our savings this month are £133. Uh, compared to last year, at the same time, £125. Um, pretty similar, but uh, yeah, slightly better 
total bill, the bill this year was uh, £87, whereas last November it was £105, and that's because we're using much more off-peak power uh, and very little peak power, as I showed earlier. Uh, the equivalent cost, you can see, um, £219. Last year it was about 230 so only about £10 different. And uh, you can see that uh, we did have a tiny little bit of uh, DFS. So this is the demand flexibility service. Um, this isn't really a demand flexibility service. I'm just counting the octopus free energy in this category here just because it's um, more convenient to do so. Um, yeah, that was our, our attempt at uh, heating uh, the hot water a little bit extra and um, running the heating a little bit hotter than normal and trying to charge the battery a little bit but we weren't home actually I was doing this all remotely because we were visiting my parents so I wasn't able to make best use of that free octopus session if we'd been at home we could have put the car on to charge as well and made better use of it but uh, as it happens we only made about or well, we saved about 91p and as I've mentioned before it's not a real saving because actually we would have um, that consumption would have been at 8.5 pence, not the 25 odd pence that um, that this uh, was rated at. So in reality, our real world savings were probably closer to 30p, something like that. So yeah, a bit of a fake saving there, but um, it all adds up to give us a total um, annual saving here of uh, about 2,000 pounds. So that's the the most important thing at the end of the day. I'm very pleased with that. Uh, when I say equivalent cost here, I mean if we'd had gas for the uh, hot water and gas for the central heating and also petrol for Kat's car um, because obviously she now has an electric car and um, charges using uh, electric and um, the savings I'm also counting uh, not having to pay for petrol and uh, offsetting that against the cost that we spend charging the car overnight during that cheap period so this is all of the all of the equivalent cost had we not had the solar the batteries um, the two heat pump systems and the EV so uh, yeah just for reference that's that's my estimate it's not completely accurate and precise but it's a reasonably good estimate I think and that's what then gives us the total savings it's the difference between the total bill the equivalent cost and um, and that DFS um, saving as well so there you go that's all of the money and uh, we're all done so of course a lot of these savings are down to the fact that we're able to get a good smart tariff and we're with Octopus as I've mentioned many times before. If you're thinking of switching to Octopus please use my referral code. You'll get £50 credit to your account and I will too when uh, you do that so that really helps the channel out. Uh, if you're unable to do that we also have a buy me a coffee account where you can chuck us a few quid if you think the, uh, the content that I create is worthwhile to you in some way. Um, of course, if you don't want to do either of those things, the best thing you can do is hit that subscribe button. That really helps the channel. Um, but otherwise, I uh, hope you enjoyed all of that and thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.